and welcome back to Nature Tech Family. In this episode, we're going to continue our series on tracking. First, we'll teach you how some animals move and how this affects the pattern of tracks that they leave behind. We will then teach you how to identify individuals in a herd or a pack so that you can follow that one individual to learn its specific habits and how it relates to the environment around it. So, grab a snack, sit back, and enjoy. Let's begin by watching the stop motion that Calvin made for us. Here we have an elk walking by. Now, let's watch this elk from a bird's eye view and look at the track pattern that it leaves behind. Let's take this pattern, we'll put it on the screen, and rotate it 90 degrees. This is called the diagonal walking pattern. It is made when an animal is at its most comfortable speed walking across the landscape from point A to point B. It's a very important pattern to recognize and understand because it's shared by all cats. So in other words, the bobcat, the cougar, yes, even fluffy, all domestic cats, and all hooved animals. So in other words, deer, elk, moose, pronghorn, etc. And all canines. So the fox, the coyote, and the wolf all use this gait. This picture shows the diagonal walking pattern of a coyote as it moves through the landscape in its most comfortable gait. Here we've illuminated them some so that you could see them easier. This picture shows a deer showing the diagonal walking pattern in snow. When you come across a set of tracks like this, showing the diagonal walking pattern, the first thing you want to do is establish the direction of travel. To make that easier, we're going to turn these tracks into deer tracks. We're going to work with the deer because most people have some form of deer that lives near them. Now we're going to draw a line straight down the center of these tracks. This line is going to represent the spine or the backbone. It helps us to be able to see that on the left side of that line is the left side of the body. The right side of the line represents the right side of the body. Now, if you get down on your hands and knees and look closely at one of the tracks in this diagonal walking pattern, you're going to notice something. What looks like one track is actually two tracks. This is called a direct register. It happens because as the animal is walking, the rear foot, shown here in blue, steps directly where the front foot was, shown here in black, underneath. And now, to help you fully understand how animals create this diagonal walking pattern, as well as a direct register, we're going to show you some Nature Tech family footage of animals walking in slow motion. As this fox walks by, pay very close attention to its feet. This is a great way to illustrate the diagonal walking pattern. Here it's easy to see that as the front foot comes up, the rear foot lands in the same exact spot. And now with a moose. Its long legs make it easy to follow the feet and see how it leaves this pattern behind as it walks across the landscape. An elk shows us how the front and rear feet leave a direct register. And now with a pronghorn. And lastly, this coyote shows us how it leaves a direct register and the diagonal walking pattern. Now that we understand how the body mechanics of these animals leaves behind a direct register and a diagonal walking pattern, we can move on to one of the greatest tools in the tracking called the stride length. With this tool, we'll be able to identify individuals in a herd or a pack. To get the stride length, you need to measure from the tip of one of the toes to the tip of the next toe in front of it. However, it must be in a direct register in order for this measurement to be accurate. This is how this works. Let's say we found the set of tracks from a deer. It's in direct register 
and showing the diagonal walking pattern. When we measure the tip of one of the hooves to the tip of the very next hooves, it shows 18 inch stride. We can now name this 18 inch stride as Bob the Deer. The reason we can name this 18 inch stride Bob the Deer is because Bob cannot create a 17 inch stride. He cannot create a 19 inch stride. Bob will always create an 18 inch stride until he grows larger because the stride length is based on the size of the animal's body and unless the body's size changes the stride does not change. Now let's say we found a different set of tracks left by a deer. Again we have to make sure it's in a direct register and in a diagonal walking pattern. Let's say this stride length was 19.5 inches. This we can now name as Dave the larger deer. Dave's body is bigger, therefore it leaves a 19 and a half inch stride. Now let's take this tool to the field and see how it works. Here we have two sets of tracks. The one on the right is illuminated in red, the one on the left is illuminated in black. The one on the right shows the 18 inch stride. The one on the left shows a 19 and a half inch stride. With these tools we now know that Bob took the trail on the right and Dave took the trail on the left. Now let's see how this works with a fox. But first let me tell you when you are measuring the stride of a canine do not count the nails always measure from one toe to the next toe because the nail length constantly changes according to what type of terrain that animal walks on. Now in this example Jim the fox has a 14 and a half inch stride. We know that Jim is slightly larger than Martha because Martha has a 13 and 3 quarter inch stride. Here we have Jack the coyote with a 21 inch stride and we know that he is larger than John because John only has a 19 inch stride. I have used this technique many times when following a pack of wolves. With this one can identify the individuals and then learn what their individual habits are and how they relate to the rest of the pack. Now let's say that we found these sets of tracks when a herd of deer walked by and we want to know how many deer walked by on this trail here. In order to do that you need to know your local average stride. First draw a line in the sand at the tips of one of the hooves. Now measure backwards that local average stride and put another line in the sand. Now count the number of tracks that are in between the two lines. In this example we have three tracks in between the two lines. That means three different deer. We've shown them here in the different colors so that you can distinguish the individuals. Now this only works if they are in direct register and showing that diagonal walking pattern. We encourage you to take these basic epic tracking skills into the field and practice them frequently. Nothing can replace the time you spend on a set of tracks to learn about the wildlife around you. We at Nature Tech Family hope you enjoyed this video. Please join us next time when we explain how the tracks can tell you if it is a male or female animal, if it has large or small antlers, and if it's pregnant or not pregnant. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, get up, get outside, and go have an adventure.